Pay attention to me. We find you all guilty of the offenses as stated. Jack Shepard, you were undoubtedly the ringleader of this drunken escapade. The apple throwing, the community singing, and the three-legged race were all your idea. The others may have joined in, but you, so to speak, were the organizing genius. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Is that all you have to say? No, sir, I'm very sorry, sir. It won't happen again, sir. I pay ten pounds. Raymond Shepherd, are your trousers falling down? No, sir. Then take your hands out of your pockets. Woo! There are some things we will not tolerate in this city, and dancing the funky chicken to the tune of the national anthem is one of them. Anything to say? Yes, sir. It wasn't the funky chicken. It was a mashed potato. Pay five pounds. You, Bernard Shepherd, are the youngest and were undoubtedly led astray by your elders. However, I cannot overlook the remarks made to Constable Murchison. Anything to say? I think I said it all last night, sir. Yes, in seven pages. <laughs> Pay five pounds. <coughs> Douglas Fairbanks, Shepherd. <laughs> <laughs> Douglas Fairbanks, Shepherd. Are you wearing a dress? No, sir, it's a skirt and blouse. <laughs> Is this your normal attire, or do you keep it for special occasions? No, sir. It was a forfeit. We were playing the minister's cat, and I lost. The minister's what? Cat, sir. It's a game, sir, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. The minister's cat's an angry cat. The minister's cat's a barmy cat. The minister's cat's a crafty cat. The minister's cat's a hey. hey. Silence, I say. Is there a report on this man? <laughs> Deprive childhood my foot. <laughs> Pay five pounds. And now we come to you, Mrs. Queenie Shepherd. I don't imagine you're feeling proud of yourself this morning, Mrs. Shepherd. Uh, no, I am not, Your Worship. In fact, I am thoroughly ashamed of myself, and I feel as though I have been a, a failure as a mother. Oh. Well, I'm glad you realise that. I should never have let them switch over to rum halfway through the evening. I should have made them stick to whiskey. With regard to your own offences, Mrs. Shepherd, the recitation of Eskimo Nell, the mouth organ recital, and the uh, trick with the stout bottle. <laughs> what have you got to say about that? Only that I have truly learned my lesson, Your Worship, and this is the last occasion you will ever see me in this dock. I'm turning over a new leaf. Are you telling me that you intend to abjure the perils of alcohol? Yes. And I'm giving up boozing. <laughs> Here, ma'am. I don't want it, thank you. You heard what I said to the magistrates. Don't look at me like that, all of you. Just because Queenie Shepherd's given up drinking, it's not the end of the world. Feels like the end of the world. Oh. Get it down, your ma'am. No, you make... thank you, Raymond. You'll make you see things in a more realistic light. No. It's not that muck we're drinking last night. It's real whiskey, look. Laird of the Bonnie Glen, made in Hong Kong. <laughs> I do not want a glass of whiskey. She fancies a glass of rum. Come on, we'll nip down the off-licence. You will not go down the off-licence. Now, sit down. Bunny, if you want to go somewhere, go to the sweet shop and buy me one of those tubes of mints with the hole in the middle. Tube of mints? What are you going to do with a tube of mints? I'm going to put them on a string and wear them round me neck. What the hell do you think I'm going to do with them? Damn it all, I've just seen a bit of sense, that's all. Not compulsive to drink, is it? She's getting ratty now. It's withdrawal symptoms. <laughs> Go on, ma'am, get it down, you. I do not want it. And as for the rest of this rot gut stuff, I know the best place for it. What are you yeah, doing? It's good biscuits. Three quid you're pouring away, do you? And how much do you think you've poured down your throat? And what have you got to show for it? A splitting hangover, a ride in a black Mariah, 
and a 30 quid fine. 30 quid. Thinking about that ever since we came out of that magistrate's court. What is our goal? What is our aim? Where are we going? Builders arms, aren't we? <laughs> builders arms. You should have been born in the builders arms, you should. He very nearly was. <laughs> that little escapade cost us 30 quid. And do you realise what we could have done with that money instead of chucking it away at the builder's arms? Yeah, chucked it away at a monkey. <laughs> yeah, right. Raymond, there are other places in this world to go, you know, besides pubs. It's funny you saying that, ma'am. I've been thinking. There are other places than pubs. Oh, my first convert. There's clubs. Oh. Well, I walked straight into that one then, didn't I? Well, we're not going to any clubs and we're not going to no pubs either, in fact. We are going on the wagon. What? Oh, huh? Did you say we? I did. Now, you know my motto, when Queenie drinks, we all drink, and when Queenie stops drinking, we all stop drinking. But that's not fair. I didn't say it was fair. I said it's what you're going to do. Anyway, it's no good for you, is booze. Be better off without it. It stunts your growth. It's not stunted yours, has it? <laughs> <laughs> is how he speaks to his mother. It's the drink talking, is that? Not him. Never dare do it otherwise. Well, I dare. And this is only my second today, barring what I've had for breakfast. And I'm not going on the wagon, and no one's going to make me. You'll do as I say, otherwise you'll wind up out in the street bag and baggage. Right then, I'll get my suitcase. See what you've done now? He's leaving home. I'm not leaving home. I've got a bottle of rum in my suitcase. I need a drink. You do not need a drink, Raymond. None of you need a drink. Oh, come on. I'm not asking the impossible. Why can't you just give it a try? Queenie, you've talked us into it. Oh. No, no. If she can do it, we can do it. From now on, we're all on the wagon. And I'll tell you what we're going to do. To show you how sincere we are, we're all going to drink to it. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, yes. Well, I'm glad you've seen a little bit of sense, and I'm sure you won't regret it because there's plenty of things you could do otherwise. You know, take our bunny. I mean, he could go down the youth club and perhaps meet a nice young girlfriend. What would I be doing with a girlfriend? Oh, it's not for me to tell you that, love, but whatever it is, it won't cost you three bob a nip. Uh, <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, Queenie. Cheers. Here's to temperance. Here's temperance. to temperance. <laughs> you middleton Jack Shepherd. What have you given me this for? Here's to temptation, Queenie. There. And it will stay there until it grows penicillin. You know, you don't realise, Jack Shepherd, but I have an iron will. All right. You can prove it. Come down to the Builder's Arms and show us your iron will yeah, there. Come on. I have no wish to go to the Builder's Arms. Ah, because you know you'd weaken. One snip of the barmaid's apron and you'd be away. You can't fight it, Queenie. It's in the blood. Oh, ye of little faith. All right, then. I will come down to the Builder's Arms. Yay! Only to get a refill for my lemonade. Five minutes, lads, and we're all on double whiskies. <laughs> Same again, our Raymond. I don't think I could manage it, ma'am. Force yourself, like you always do. Jack? Oh, no thanks, Queenie. I've reached my limit. I'll never get it down. Oh, I never <laughs> thought I'd hear those words. Oh, same again, Jeremy. A -a Another tomato juice. Oh. <laughs> Another one? He's already had 15. Mm, well, won't do him any harm. Uh, same again, uh, our Douglas? I don't know. I feel all funny. My head's going round. Ah, that's because you've been mixing your drinks, you see. You started off on bitter lemon and then you switched over to pineapple juice. <laughs> now then, it'll be uh, one tomato juice, one bitter lemon, a pint of orange squash for our bunny, <laughs> A tonic water, and I think I will have a peppermint cordial. I hope you're not going to keep this up for long, Queenie. You know, I've got my reputation to think about. Mum, I think I'm going to be sick. Not in my <laughs> pub, you're not. <laughs> Gone on flipping bitter lemon, any road. Jack, you can make yourself useful and all. Get a refill for my lemonade. 
Bunny, stop looking so mournful and get over there on that piano. Yeah, come on, Alma. Come on. Come on. But, Mum, I'm sober. In that case, you've got something to celebrate then, haven't you? We always have a sing-song on a Tuesday. Even show your people's livers pickled in jars. Hey, Queenie, uh, can I come to the lemonade for you? You know, that's the fifth time you've asked me that, Jack Shepherd. I think this cure is beginning to work. Now, I want you to listen to all they say about the evils of drink, because every word is true. Evening. Shushing me for we're not sitting in church. And it's no good her looking down her nose at me. <laughs> Cooking Sherry Kate is what we used to call her. <laughs> Who's got the toffees? <laughs> Rum and butter. You won't <laughs> even try, will you? <laughs> hey, up here comes old Mother Petty. Fancy seeing you here, though. Fancy seeing you here, Mrs. Shepherd. There's hope for the world yet. I didn't know you had a drinking problem, Mrs. Petty. I appear to have five drinking problems here tonight, Mrs. Shepherd. I am your lecturer. <laughs> if I'd known she was coming, I'd have baked a cake with half a brick in it. <laughs> cheers. Yes, friends, I do mean cheers. That is the expression which I believe is used in public houses by those unfortunates who are slaves to the demon alcohol. They say cheers whenever they raise a foaming tanker to their lips. Cheers whenever they squander their money on whiskey and soda, vodka and lemonade, and rum and peppermint. There is a family among us tonight who know only too well what price must be paid to achieve this mockery of cheerfulness. Their very faces testify against them their lacklustre hair and waxen complexions, and their cheap clothes, all they can afford because the money has gone on drink. But most of all, I beg you to notice their miserable expressions. Do they look cheerful, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> of course they do not. They know more than anyone what is the real truth behind the bogus glamour of the builder's arms. However, I want to tell you this evening about another unfortunate family that was once a prosperous and happy family, but was reduced to poverty and despair by one glass of beer. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> by one half pint glass of ordinary, cellar cooled, bitter beer. I will call this family the weaklings, for weak they were. Mr. Weakling, at the time of my story, was a lifelong teetotaler. He had made a successful marriage, and by dint of hard work, he climbed high in his profession as a chartered accountant. One fateful afternoon, Mr. Weakling was called upon to audit the accounts of a certain public house. It was an oppressive day in high summer, and as he toiled on, Mr. Weakling began to grow hot and thirsty. His throat was parched and beads of perspiration stood on his brow. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Weakling needed a drink. 
<laughs> like many other weaklings. <laughs> he asked the landlord for a drink, meaning, of course, a glass of water. The landlord, mistaking the nature of his request, gave him instead a glass of beer. And although alcohol had never touched his lips, he was too polite to refuse it. Too polite, did I say? Too foolish, I should have said. For within a year, that man was crawling in the gutter. <laughs> yes, sir. One glass of beer took him on the road to ruin. You see, he enjoyed it. What harm can a glass of beer do, he asked himself. So he drained it down every drop. And he called for another, and another, and another, and another, and another, and another. It's no good, lads. I've done my best. I shall have to go. You sly, miserable pigs, you've gone without your mother. <laughs> Mrs. Shepherd, please, will you sit down? I shall not sit down, Mrs. Petty. And before I go, let me tell you a story about a family, a family called Strength of Will, for that's what they were, Mrs. Petty, till they came here. But you have turned them one by one into the miserable wrecks that you do not see before you here. You, Mrs. Petty, have driven those boys to drink. And now it is up to me to get them home and undo the evils that you have done. And I wish you a temperate good night. going to play or are you lot going to sit staring up at the ceiling all night? I mean, I'd just like to know, that's all. I'm thirsty. Oh, well, you're not going to find a drink up there, are you? Whatever did happen to that bottle of lemonade? Has it turned up yet? Seems to have vanished into thin air. I can't understand it. You know, I was sure I left it on that table. Right, let's have a break for refreshments. I'll pop out and get us all a bit of lemon apiece. You are not going down to the Builder's Arms. Who said anything about the Builder's Arms? I'm not going anywhere near the Builder's Arms. I'm going in the opposite direction. And you're not going the Drum and Monkey either. Sit down. I'm only doing this for your own good. I've got to watch over you, because if I don't, you'll be through that door and into the nearest public house. No. All four of you. Oh, well, yeah. Yes, you would. Yes, you would. You encourage each other. All right, then. We go separately. Go separately? Where? Well, I don't know. Anywhere. I, I wouldn't mind going to the pictures. Anything would be better than sitting in here all day. All right, then. Go on. I'll trust you. No, you don't mean it. It's a trap. I do mean it, Jack Shepherd. I'm going to treat you like a grown man. But I want a full account of that picture. I want to know who was in it. And if I smell drink on your breath when you come back, you won't have to know about it. You, you won't regret this, Queenie. Mm, I sincerely hope not. Shall I go with him? No, you will not go with him. You can take yourself off to the football match and go directly to the football match. Do not collect 200 pound. Pass the builder's arms on your way. And I want to see a football program when you come back. Douglas, where do you go when you go out? I never go out. It's about time you did then. I tell you what, you can take yourself down to the city art gallery and look at all the pretty pictures. Can I go with him? They've got a naked Venus down there. You find your own naked Venus. Take yourself off to the youth club and see if you can meet a nice young girlfriend. And when you do... And I come... know, you want to know all about well, it. not all about it, love. I mean, just use a little bit of discretion and remember you're on your honour, both of you. Will you be all right by yourself, Mum? Oh, I'll be all right. I've got old Mar Petty coming round later to talk about her a tidy gardens competition or something. I'll deal with her. Anyway, you're, you're on your honour. Builder's arms first stop. Hey, just a minute. She's not all that damp. Look at the time. Five past rotten three. All pubs are shut. Wouldn't you know it? Well, what are we going to do then? Clubs. You what? What I've been telling you, clubs. The Pink Pussycat in Market Street. It's open all afternoon. We don't belong to the Pink Pussycat. Don't worry. I know the Pink Pussy. <laughs> <laughs> He's the winner!
Now, you no, went to the football match. No, 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 She's waiting for our report, isn't she? She wants to know what good little boys we've been. Go on now. You can put it on your favourite. At uh, 3 pm, following instructions, <laughs> I picked up a bird in the table tennis room of St Mary's Youth Club. <laughs> she gave her name as Raquel Andres. <laughs> Although I have reason to believe this was an alias. <laughs> Proceeding in an easterly direction, we arrived at the Corporation Cemetery where we got down behind a big marble slab. <laughs> at 7.30 p.m. I made an excuse and left. <laughs> Private feuds, kicks, punch-ups and injuries. This grim battle was a disgrace to soccer. It was needle-needle all the way as the home team collided with a stonewall defence that gave nothing away. Both managers refused to comment on the mockery of this game called football. Final score, 2-0. <laughs> They died with their clothes off. <laughs> Certificate XX is another sex romp seen through the peeping Tom lens of director Claude Louis Blimper. <laughs> Cannibal chief meets Danish old pair girl and has breakfast in bed. <laughs> A smoggest board of laughs, sizzling fun for all the family. Rich, warm and sumptuous, the retrospective exhibition of nudes at the City Art Gallery is a celebration of the artist's lascivious eye through the ages. We take, we take an exhilarating switchback journey over a landscape of dimpled buttocks and mountainous breasts, all done in fresh rosy tints and then I got chucked out. <laughs> Well, there you are then, Queen. We've all done exactly what you told us to do. I mean, something to be proud of is that. <coughs> right then, you tell us what you've been up to. Come on, Mum. Fair's fair. <laughs> <laughs> Pardon? I'm sorry, lads, but I'm afraid I've let you down. <laughs> Gin. <laughs> and... <laughs> that bottle of lemonade. Do you know where I found it, of all places? In the chandelier. Aye, and then old Mar Petty came round and I gave her a glass and then I gave her another and another and another. I don't and... believe it. I don't believe she was here at all. Oh, you can do as you like, love, but she's in the bedroom having a quiet lie down. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, my darlings. Is, is, is there any more of that lemonade left? Hey! 